Now that the sea trout season on my home rivers have drawn to a close, my mind starts drifting to uh, the sea trout in the southern hemisphere and uh, specifically those in the, the Rio Grande. Um, it's certainly nice to, to break up the break up the winter and chase the, the sea trout in South America uh, before returning to essentially our spring and uh, the whole process starts all over again. Um, and before going on any of these trips you really uh, build up the excitement uh, preparing your tackle um, and for many, uh, me included, fly tying is, uh, is a really important part of um, building up trip, uh, building up to a trip and also the excitement um, of a trip, you know, what will be, what may not be, uh, but certainly uh, fly tying helps uh, helps helps build the excitement, but um, and also it's, it, it's always nice to catch on your own fly, um, even in, in in such locations. One of my very uh, tried and tested patterns down there is a fly called the EMB, which um, is actually named after one of the estancias down there called Estancia Maribetti, uh, which actually controls uh, the majority of the left bank um, of the Rio Grande on the Argentine side. Um, so this fly was actually named after Estancia uh, Maribetti, EMB. Uh, this is a slight variation uh, on that theme, but very much it is it is an EMB, uh, which is essentially just a, a black body with with white rubber legs. Uh, this this pattern, uh, as you can see, I've I'm actually tying it on a uh, curved, a very strong wire curved shank hook, like a grub um, grub or shrimp hook. Uh, these are very strong hooks. I, I actually prefer to tie them on carp fishing hooks. They tend to be a much stronger wire uh, than the majority of hooks to, uh, you know, specifically designated for, uh, for for fly tying, uh, for trout uh, and so forth. But if you can find a strong wire curve shank for uh, steelhead salmon uh, and so forth, they will be perfect. If not, again, look, look towards the carp fishing world and you'll find some really strong wire, good quality hooks. Including, uh, including the one I've got in the, in the vice here. Um, I'm using a orange, uh, pretty fluorescent orange tungsten bead on the front. Uh, size of the hook is a size eight. Uh, the size of the tungsten is a si uh, is a four millimeter tungsten bead. Uh, you can tie these all the way from perhaps uh, a size six down to a fourteen, uh, and then just vary the size of the bead accordingly. Very simple fly. So be Beyond the the bead and the hook, there are literally only two materials to tie this fly. I'm very much uh, you know, a, a fan of uh, you know creating patterns that you can you know rustle up a, a fly box in very little time and spend more time on the water versus more time at the vise. Uh, but you can build up a, a good collection of these flies very quickly and they, they work really, really well. So if you are heading to the Rio Grande or the Rio Gallegos or, or wherever, I would really recommend just tying a few of these. So the body is um, micro cactus chenille. So if you, if you know Fritz, this is basically like a really fine version of Fritz. And this is a black pearl version. Uh, it's really really fine stuff. It's hold on if I take it off. It's 0.8 millimeters uh, in diameter. So really really fine stuff. So this is the body. So that's that's one material. And the second body is um, would be the rubber legs, and they are wopsy round rubber uh, rubber legs in medium and white, obviously. Uh, but that's all. Yeah, those are the two ingredients for this fly. So just begin by catching this in towards the head. So this is your tying thread as well as your body essentially. So let's create a, a body there. And what we're going to do then, we're just going to snip there because then that helps taper the body towards the rear. You can take this down as far as you as you like down the bend. You can just, just go past the bend. What I would usually do is just stop there, build it back up. So you've got two layers there. I would then stop towards the bead, go back down, only about halfway this time. Because what you're now doing is you're building a taper into the fly. So that's perfect, just there. As you can see, we've got a much thinner profile down here, now a much thicker profile up here, which is perfect. 
Now come the rubber legs. Really, really simple. Take them behind your thread, up and over. That just catches the rubber legs in. Take one turn, two turns, just like that. And what I've done here, this is a little cheat for you. Tie them in before they, they come in big strands like this. So what you do is you just peel off two. Just hold them together though. Don't actually split them that stage. So I've actually tied them in as two which are still joined. That makes life a lot easier. When you're at that point, I've done a couple of uh, touching turns just to catch them in place. What you can do then is another turn and then another couple of turns just behind the bead. And tie that off. Be a little bit careful with the fritz because the core is not that strong and just tease it down. We will super glue behind the head so just tease it down and it eventually just drops in behind the bead like that. There you go. Snip off the fritz as close as you can. And that is basically the flight done. I know it sounds daft because we haven't actually done much. And then so all you do is, because we've actually left these connected, when you snip them now, they're actually going to be exactly the same length. So we snip, and again at the top, we just snip together, like so, and then split after you've done that. Split them, and you can splay them a bit if you want as well. But that is basically the fly done really is that simple you can you can see they literally take a couple of minutes to tie it's a very very effective pattern uh, two ingredients four ingredients if you count the bead and the hook um, but you can tie a box full of them very quickly uh, but a, a very effective very effective pattern uh, to, to catch sea trout in Argentina I hope it brings you luck Thank you.